Today we're going to be looking at the speech recognition engine, which is actually a really cool engine that Microsoft made that allows you to add speech capabilities to your applications. So if you want your users to be able to say commands and have your applications do that, then this is a really cool API for that. So you could build something out like that with Google's API, but it definitely costs money to do that. Microsoft also has an Azure cloud platform API that I'm sure is more accurate, but that also costs money. So if you're looking for a free solution for a hobby application, or if you're just trying to get your MVP built for your commercial application, this is a really cool place to start. And then you can swap the code over later to use those more expensive APIs. So I'm gonna show you start to finish how I got everything set up for my personal assistant application here. And that should get you on the way to using the speech recognition engine yourself. If you wouldn't mind, if you could subscribe, it would really help the channel out and we could show this to more people because I think this is a really powerful tool that not a lot of people are using and adding speech recognition to our applications is a really good thing going forward. So, all right, let's get right into it. All right, so like I said, this is Microsoft Speech Recognition Engine. So there's, of course, Microsoft Documentations on it. And this is actually the page that I built my code off of using this example. They have a console app built here. My application is actually a WinForms app. But yeah, I'm just going to show you how I implemented it myself. And I'll also have a link to this page because this is super useful too as another reference. All right, so the first thing you're going to need to do is add this using Microsoft.Speech.Recognition line. Um, you're definitely going to, have to import that library, but to do that, you're going to have to add a reference. So to add a reference, you're going to have to come over here to your references in your project, add a reference, and then you're going to, have to search for speech. And then you want to add this system.speech reference here. And once you have that, you'll be able to add this using line system.speech.recognition. All right, so after that's imported, we'll be able to carry on. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is create a new recognizer. So at the top of my class here, I've created an empty object for the recognizer. And then on load, I have load speech recognition being called here. This is, um, this is a function that just has the loading code for the recognizer. So the first thing we do is we create a new speech recognition engine and you have to pass it a language because this works in multiple languages. So you instantiate your recognizer. And then the next thing is you're gonna build this choice library. So if you look at this, they've created a list of choices here. So back in my application, I created a function here that returns a list of choices. So I'm just literally creating a new choices object and then I'm adding my choices to it. And these are things that the user can say. So I could say the character name and move. So in this case, uh, character name is actually Bambini. So I could say Bambini move or Bambini let's play chess or Bambini close notepad or Bambini open notepad. So for everything I want it to be able to recognize, I need to add a choice. So if you come back over here and look at their code, they've got um, restaurants, hotels, gas stations. So those are the things that it's going to recognize. And to really expand on how it works for my experience, if you don't add a list of choices and you just let it kind of pick words, it's going to be horribly inaccurate. So if you say something like restaurants, it's gonna think you said stars or something. But if you add a choice for the word restaurants, if you even get close to restaurants, then it's gonna pick restaurants. Or if you even get close to the word hotels, it'll pick hotels. So it's way more accurate because it only has a small list of things to pick from. So instead of just returning the garbled words that it thinks that you may have said, it's actually gonna pick one of the choices, whichever one's closest to it. So that actually makes the accuracy really good with this. That doesn't really make it very good for dictation. So if you're trying to use it to just write a book, it's not gonna work very well for that. But if you're just trying to use it to find restaurants or find hotels or to tell something to open Notepad or open YouTube, it's gonna work really well for that from my experience so far. So, okay, you're going to build your list of choices and that's going to return back over here to this grammar builder. I pass the grammar builder to grammar and then you call this load grammar on the recognizer object. So let's go back to their code because I think theirs is a little simpler. So they created their grammar builder and then they added their choices to the grammar builder. 
and then they created a new grammar which is just filled with the grammar builder so that's about it for the grammar portion you're literally just creating a list of choices that the voice recognizer can choose from to match things so the next thing is going to be the speech recognized event handle so what this does is when your recognition engine hears something that matches one of the choices, it's going to call whatever function you have here, which in my case is this recognizer speech recognize function. The parameters have to be set up exactly like this. And this handler is just going to make it so this function gets called every time. And then you've got this e.result.text, which is going to be the result that the recognizer spits out. And instead of this being just kind of random words that are kind of close to what was said, it's actually gonna be one of the choices, which is super handy when you just wanna do a select case or a switch on whatever that choice was. So that makes this a lot more accurate and really easy to use. But yeah, that's about it for this speech recognize function. It's literally just see what this matches and then do something accordingly. So that's just kind of how you use it at that point. So the next thing we need to do after setting up the event handler is set input to default audio device. So this is gonna be if it's listening on your microphone or if it's listening on um, a headset or something like that. If you have multiple devices installed on your computer, just for simplicity, you might want to disable some of them when you're first writing this. Um, you can definitely get into changing which audio device it picks up or whatever. But um, just for my purposes, the default audio device worked perfectly. So after that, we're going to actually start the speech recognition. So that's just this recognize async, which just spins up another thread for the speech recognition. Um, the multiple parameter here just says, hey, after you hear something, keep listening for something else. So this just keeps it listening constantly. And honestly, that's about all there is to it. I mean, this is the main core part of it. It's just loading the speech recognizer. And once it's set up, it's going to call this function here where we check what matched and then we do something based on that match. And that's all I really needed to do. And I'm going to show you um, a couple of examples with the application that I've built. You can definitely build this off of the example that they give. So I'm going to leave a link to this in the description so that you'll be able to come and use their code to build your own version of this. But yeah, let's go ahead and look at some of the examples that I have set up here. Bombini, open YouTube. And Bombini, let's play chess. Hi, Bombini. Why, hello there. Bombini, open Excel. But yeah, that about wraps it up. And if you wouldn't mind subscribing, that would definitely help the channel out. And we could show more people about this really cool engine. Bye, Bombini. Bye, Darren. And bye, everybody else. And I'll see you in the next one.